Okay, uh, hi there, I'm back. So in this video, I consider it's the right moment to explain how the the avatar shape is achieved and how the, the clothes adapt to this shape. So we have uh, two, two, two avatars here, two situations. And first of all, uh, it's easy to identify that in this case, in the left, here uh, the the gyms, the the it's only um, overlay. So uh, let me just toggle the wireframe. Yeah, here. So uh, it's simply a texture overlaid on on the base texture of the female avatar. You can even notice that. Uh, with the atlas uh, and how it's calculated, we, we can even define if the shirt is going over the jeans or below the, the jeans. Uh, when working with the mesh itself, we can have any topology, uh, any UVs. Uh, it's, you're completely free to, to create the content. Uh, and you can see how it adapts to the to the shape of the of the avatar. So we can have very different shapes, and uh, the cloth is working quite well here. So how how it's done? Uh, first of all, let me let me bring a Blender here. Uh, for this kind of thing, I think it's better to simply show it here. So, uh, this could be done in any other application, like 3D Max, uh, Maya, uh, Soft Image. Uh, basically, I'm, I'm working with Blender, mainly being open source. It follows the, the main concept on Yuma. Uh, of being possible to 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 open the, this kind of information for everyone. I mean, uh, decode everything. You have access to all this data. And uh, right now, I'm going to explain how 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 this kind of thing works. This is the uh, base mesh of the male avatar. Uh, but the the main thing I want to show here is how the shape is achieved. So uh, I have a lot of bones that are responsible for this shape variation. I've been uh, playing around with, with this kind of thing for, for a while. And uh, I've noticed that it would be possible to adjust the avatar shape this way. I mean, being able to scale things and uh, change position. This can be very powerful to define an avatar shape, you know. But there is a, a problem in this situation. This is a particular problem with a non-uniform scale. So, for example, if I want to uh, make this guy stronger, so uh, changing this area, but like uh, that, you know, you can you can notice that it's not only changing uh, the, the bone I'm, I've, I'm selecting. It's also changing the children's. And the, the problem, the big problem here, if I rotate the children, it deforms. Uh, this is a consequence of the way uh, this is handled with non-uniform scale. So basically, we wouldn't be able to uh, change 
upon a non-uniform scale because it would make the the children deform. So how do I, how how I handle this? In fact, I have a, a pair of bones. I've been selecting this guy here for changing the the R, but in fact, uh, the bone that is uh, influencing the skin is this one, the children. So if I select this and move, you can see this one is being changing the skin. The the father, the uh, it's simply uh, changing uh, the the children. So if we need any non-uniform scale, we simply change the children. And the rest of the bone structure is stable and, and it's not deforming. So this way it's possible to have a, a huge variation. and uh, keep the, the bone structure. So here if I select this, I can see, I can have a lot of variation, a lot of adjusts, I can change a lot of stuff simply by scaling or moving a bone. It keeps the, the animation, everything, you know. That's really nice. If you're worried with the performance because of the number of bones, not all of those bones are receiving the skin, changing the, the mesh. Not all of them are skinned. Uh, and not all of those bones receive animation. In fact, uh, not even half of the, the amount of bone here is really being animated. Uh, most of those are simply receiving an adjust, like this. And uh, the other ones are, are, are being used for animation. The same applies for, for the, the face itself. You see, uh, we have a lot of bones. This also makes it possible to animate the avatar. Uh, but it also makes it possible to have any variation. So uh, if, you, if you want uh, a different new shape, everything is possible. I mean, what I've, uh, you've, you've seen in the web player, what we've seen until now, it's only a small uh, fraction of what's possible, you see? One single bone and uh, the position, how it changes the shape. So uh, basically I'm, what the sliders are doing is a simple, uh, simple change, uh, they, they are simply changing uh, scale and position of some of those bones to define uh, different shapes. So uh, right now uh, I'm, we have almost uh, four, 40 sliders, we could be, have uh, we could have hundreds. Uh, as you, you've noticed it's possible to change the, the shape uh, not not necessarily in a symmetric way. I mean, we can we can keep symmetry, but we can also have completely different uh, volumes in each size. So I'm doing this in Blender, but the same is being done in Unity itself. So the eyes. Uh, people have been asking about the eyes, so you can see you can even uh, change the the the, cha the shape of the of the eye. You see, it 
there's a lot of possibilities considering this. And we have a benefit here. Uh, as you've noticed, uh, the clothes are adapting to the, the shape. Because clothes are following the same the same uh, rigging and scheme. So here for for example, if I get the this this address here, you can see how the the female leg and the the cloth is adapting. You know? Because clothes are also receiving the same the same influence. So you might be worried uh, how hard it is to rig those clothes to adapt on the on the body shape. Well, for most cases, uh, especially clothes that are, that are uh, close to the the body shape. It's quite easy, and most of it is done uh, automatically. In Blender, we have uh, some scripts to handle this situation. And uh, in most cases, it's just pressing uh, uh, the right buttons. So uh, it's really, really uh, making things uh, viable and, and quite simple. Uh, but I'm aware the same is possible in other 3D software, not only Blender. So uh, you're still able to to create content in any any package you you prefer.